Normally, when an enzyme interacts with a substrate, the substrate binds to the active site of the enzyme, making this an enzyme-substrate complex. The enzyme then catalyzes a reaction for the substrate, which in turn produces a product. During a competitive inhibition, however, an inhibitor binds to the same location as the substrate, or in other words, to the active site. As a result, the inhibitor blocks the substrate from ever reaching the active site of the enzyme by direct competition. As a result, it prevents the substrate from getting catalyzed by the enzyme. This is why we call it competitive inhibition, and it is a type of reversible inhibition, meaning that if we either increase the concentration of substrate or decrease the concentration of inhibitors, the reaction returns to normal. Let us look at how we can express competitive inhibition using a Michaelis Menten plot, where the y axis is the rate of the reaction and the x axis is the substrate concentration. So, if this is a normal reaction between an enzyme and a substrate, we see that the rate of reaction increases if we increase the concentration of substrate. However, if we add a competitive inhibitor, the Michaelis Menten plot starts looking like this. As you can see, V max remains the same, which makes sense because if we add enough substrate, it will basically outcompete the inhibitor and attach to the available enzymes before the inhibitor has the opportunity to do so. The Km value, on the other hand, is higher. Now, why is that? Well, if we liken the enzyme activity to that of a car, the enzyme is the engine of the car and the substrate is the fuel that the car uses. Km is then the measure of fuel efficiency. So in other words, the less fuel you need to reach half of Vmax, the more efficient the enzyme is. So if the Km is low, you have a really efficient enzyme. If the Km is high, the enzyme is much less efficient, since it takes more fuel to reach half of Vmax. In other words, it makes sense that if we add a competitive inhibitor, it would decrease the efficiency of the reaction, thereby increasing the Km value. Let us also take a quick look at the line weaver berg plot for competitive inhibition, where the y-axis is 1 over the rate of the reaction, the x-axis is 1 over the substrate concentration, and we also know that the y-intercept displays 1 over the theoretical maximum of the reaction, and the x-intercept displays negative 1 over the Michaelis constant, or Km. Since we know that Vmax remains the same, we can fix that point of the new line weaver berg line. In the same manner, as the Michaelis constant increases, but is inversed in the line weaver berg plot, we can rotate the line counterclockwise to get the new plot in the case of competitive inhibition. Since again, the x-intercept is negative 1 over the Km value. If you would like to learn more about uncompetitive inhibition, check out this video next. Until next time.